Don't you think this ship looks great? Hi, I'm Cruz and Jules. We're gonna go on a tour of the Celebrity Equinox. We're starting out here on deck 14 at the aft of the ship. You can get here by walking through the buffet. And I like sitting out here because you get great views when you're doing sail away, but it's also very peaceful. Let's move up a deck. We are outside on deck 15. This is the Whiskey Club. It was closed for the duration of our cruise. I don't know why, maybe it's the same reason as the duty free shop being closed because we were in the EU the whole time. We were in the dead heat of the summer and I have to tell you this sunny part of deck 15 was quite hot during the day. If you look towards the right, that's where they have glass blowing and then do you see that movie screen? They play movies in the day and the evening. If you want a private cabana to the right, you can rent one of those so you have your own exclusive area or you could just go and sit on the grass and watch. We're going to head towards the after the ship right now and as we go around the corner you're going to see there's going to be a little uh, towel station and that's where you could grab a clean towel or just dump your used towels. Towards the later half of the day you're also going to find that there's going to be some throw blankets there. I recorded this video in July of 2024. I was also on this ship in October 2017 and I don't remember everything but this area to the left I heard this whole part is new but as of the last dry dock which was April or May 2024 and also the furnishings are probably newer out here or refreshed. This happened to be the meeting spot that I set with my sister. I have a feeling that she liked it out here on the top of deck 15 at the aft. She didn't come out and say it was her first cruise, but look at you get these great views. Oh, look who I found. It's my sister and she spotted a helicopter. You'll see in another part of the video, the front of the ship with the big H and that's where the helicopter went to go land for an emergency evacuation. So right now we're looking at one of the ports in Italy and then when you're sailing, you get to see the wake of the ship. Do you notice the flag? Is it a Maltese flag? Because the ship was registered in Malta and when the cruise ship's in port you're going to see a flag and then usually when you're sailing away you'll see one of the officers take it down. There's a little bar to the right here and now this side of the ship is almost like the other side. The only difference is this area here is a smoking area. Most cruise ships will have designated smoking areas and there's usually two or three spots and they'll alternate between port and starboard side. So in this case, I think we're on the port side right now. As we come around this corner, you're going to get another look at some of those cabanas you can rent. Unfortunately, that does come at a fee, but if you don't want to do that, you could just peek out the window here and get a really good look at the scenery. It's fair to say we were the biggest ship in town. Now let's move along. Oh, you could see the big Celebrity X on the smokestack. If you're in port one day and there's multiple ships there, you want to get an idea of what your cruise ship looks like. Celebrity ships are painted with their distinct color blue and white, and you look for the white X. That's your ship if you're on Celebrity. You're going to notice we're approaching stairs, and here's a little tip. Usually where you find a staircase, there's going to be doors. If we don't want to take the stairs, you can go through the doors and there's going to be elevators there. But let's go downstairs outside and catch a nice view. We're on deck 14 now and this is an important deck. Why? Because if you head to the right, there's going to be an entrance way and you could go to the on deck 14 of Celebrity Equinox and we're about to head into the Ocean View Cafe, which is the buffet. There's hand sanitizer, just as you'd find on any other cruise line. The food that we're about to see is what's served at a typical late breakfast buffet. There's an assortment of bread products. You could get them toasted or take them as is. We'll move on to the omelet station. You can pick any ingredients you want. There's an assortment of meat and cheeses, vegetables, and it took about three minutes for a custom made omelet. Here you can see other things like roasted potatoes, beans, sausages. This area here is if you want to order a cappuccino or espresso, you can walk up to the bar or the wait staff does take your order at the table. Now we're at American Breakfast where you get roasted potatoes, pork sausage, bacon, grilled vegetables, eggs, hard boiled or scrambled. There are fried eggs at another station. 
You can see from this pot here, there's a fresh pot of scrambled eggs. There's always a turnover of food. Let's check out the carving station for breakfast. Today's offering is a honey glazed ham. If you like applesauce, there's some that's available for the side. There's also all kinds of condiments available. Let's move on. We're still at the American Breakfast Station where you could get hash brown, more options for roasted vegetables, chicken sausage, grilled tomatoes, beans, and more scrambled eggs. Time to move on to another station. How about pastries where we could get chocolate croissants, regular croissants, some kind of pinwheel pastry. Or is that a Danish? How about some muffins? Now on the other side, let's go check it out. There seems to be something like a dinner roll, more fresh bread. There's always an assortment of breads available and they're baked fresh daily. You could get your own pats of butter, different kinds of cheeses in the morning and some cold cuts. I'm not entirely sure what this is, but I think it's flavored sugar and there's oatmeal and grits. Remember Mel's Diner? Okay, here's some fruit. It's probably something like peaches and nectarines. There's some chopped up fruit, prunes, and then I'm not entirely sure what this other stuff is. It would have been labeled though. Okay, if you like yogurt, here you go. Here's your little station. And then there's also kind of an assortment of different types of milk, like almond milk or lactose-free milk, and some specialty juices like pineapple juice and uh, maybe some other tropical varieties. Here are some fresh fruits, oranges, bananas, and melon, pineapple, watermelon. You're gonna find that pretty much daily. Get ready for the wave. The crew on Celebrity Equinox are very happy and friendly people. Not to mention hard workers. Now we're into the salmon area. Not entirely sure what I was looking at, but I did see lemon wedges and perhaps capers, and I really don't even know what a caper is. Is it a seed? Is it a nut? Is it an herb or a fruit? Okay, I just looked it up. They are small flower buds that grow off a shrub in the Mediterranean. Oh, and another website says that the status of the species is controversial and unsettled. Here you see the dining staff is keeping the place clean. There's fried eggs, poached eggs, different kinds of toppings. Some more baked beans, I think. Now we're here at another station where they have vegetable muffins and fried rice for breakfast. Well, that looks interesting. It's nice. I had it yesterday. What is it? Do you know? It's shaksuka. I've never heard of it. It's, I think it's from the Middle East with like eggs, baked and tomato sauce. I might have to try that. Is it spicy? It's not too bad, no. Okay. Here we have some hard boiled eggs with some toppings and biscuits and gravy. Next up, fried bread and blood sausage. Also, there's baked beans again, some more sausage, and regular bacon. Oh, and more scrambled eggs. Here's another fruit station where everything's nicely cut up for you and displayed. On this particular day, there was a huge display of banana bread. Here we are in the beverage area. It's a self-serve area where you could get yourself hot or cold drinks. Oh, and I never found a time where there was a shortage of milk or cream for the coffee. There was regular and decaf coffee, and you could see here, there's an assortment of different teas, hot chocolate, things like that, and then cold drinks like apple juice, orange juice, fruit punch, lemonade, water, and iced tea. The variety of cold drinks does change throughout the day because at lunchtime, you're gonna find more iced tea and lemonade. I found the seating to be very nice and comfortable. And as you can tell, there's great views out the window. Personally, I prefer to eat outside at the back. So let's see if I can find a chair out here. We're back at the Ocean Cafe on the Celebrity Equinox. It's late in the evening. Let's see what's available. There's some seating there. There's pizza. Every time I've been in the buffet, there's been four different varieties. Pepperoni is always one of them. Moving along, there's also usually a pasta station going and you can custom make your own pasta. Oh, those garlic knots are really good. And then there's always prepared pasta. 
You'll find the typical sauces like marinara, bolognese, and alfredo. Here's a sandwich station. So these sandwiches usually change every day. You're going to find some freshly baked rolls and bread. And then there'll be a variety of fruits. And sometimes there's cheese and cold cuts too. You wouldn't be at a cruise ship buffet if there's no dessert. Here you go, there's a wide array of different desserts available. There's usually sugar-free and gluten-free options. If you're craving healthy food or something green, there's always a salad bar after the breakfast hours. And everything's nicely cut up and prepared for you, so really, you just have to assemble. This cruise ship is set up a little bit differently than most of the cruise ships that I've been on. Most of the cruise ships that I've sailed on have a Lido deck, which is the deck with the pool and the buffet. So usually you just walk straight across from the pool area into the buffet area, but not this time. The buffet is one deck above and you can see the pools below. So there are hot tubs here, four in this case, and then two swimming pools. And then as you go about midship, you're gonna see the mass grill. And this is a great place if you wanna just grab like a hot dog or hamburger. Let's go take a look at the menu. They also have french fries. It's a very simple menu, but let's go take a look and see what else they have. Oh, they also have veggie burgers, turkey burgers, cheeseburgers, and the self-serve soft drink area. So there's water, ice, fruit punch, iced tea, lemonade, and then some kind of tropical drink. You could see more lounge chairs. What was odd about this cruise ship is see how the lounge chairs are set up. A lot of them are facing the forward of the ship. Personally, if I'm on one of these decks, I'd like to have my lounge chair facing looking at the ocean. What's your preference? I think that maybe they did that because there was easier access to get in and out between the chairs. Time to cool off and go inside. This was air conditioned. Oh, you want to know by the doors, there's usually a public washroom. So a men's room might be on one side of the ship and then the woman's on the other. Let's go in the sky lounge. And as we approach, what do you think? This is really one of the awesomest places on the ship. And it's almost like a well-kept secret if you don't know about it. This is at the forward of the ship. So deck 14 and the bridge is actually below. And you could go in. At nighttime, there's karaoke. I have to tell you, they had a really cool karaoke show on this. It wasn't just regular karaoke with singing, they actually had a backup band. So if you are on the Celebrity Equinox and you got a chance to go do that, it's a lot of fun. People were out there dancing to karaoke. I've never seen that before. But now we're at the very forward of the ship and they have all this comfortable seating. This area might have been, let's call it, renovated or updated in the last dry dock. but. You have this comfortable place for seating. There's the little helicopter pad. So if there is an emergency, that's where the helicopter lands. Oddly enough, on our cruise, there was an emergency rescue and they did have to use that helicopter pad. Normally when you're sailing, you just get a great view of the open ocean. These windows are expansive and basically you're seeing what the captain and the officers on the bridge we're see. We're outside now and we're taking a tender into port. So this is the top of a tender boat. The bottom part is covered and I just like sitting on the top of the boat when I tender into port if the weather's nice. Just to warn you, sitting up here is not ideal for everyone. You do have to navigate up a narrow set of a staircase inside this tender boat. And also it might be bobbing up and down when you walk up the stairs. This is our ship for nine days, the Celebrity Equinox. It's a solstice class ship. It came out in 2009. It accommodates 2,850 passengers. The last time it went into dry dock was April or May 2024. By today's standards, I'd say it's a mid-sized ship at 122,000 gross tons. We're on deck three right now, midship, guest relations. You can see there's a little lineup. There's lots of place for seating and it's a very nice place to hang out. There's hand sanitizer like you'll find everywhere. Uh, ATM machine this time, this one was out of order. 
just keep that in mind but there are other ATMs on the ship. This is where you're going to see the portrait of the ship's godmother. Her name is Nina Barrow and she was the founder of a UK based charity called Walk the Walk. In case you get lost around the cruise ship you can find this little sculpture type thing by the elevators. It tells you whereabouts you are. So where by the red dot that's deck three and now we know where we could go. Okay, let's see what's this way. Of course, there's some shopping displays. Oh, there's usually stairs right by all the elevators. This is the Silhouette Dining Room. It's not dinner time right now, but let's go take a peek. Also, you can see what the daily menu is. It changes slightly day to day. There are some entrees or starters that are available every day, and then the rest of the menu changes out each day. It also shows what the recommended dress is for the day. It's not a dress code per se. Dressing up on cruise ships isn't what it used to be. Celebrity has gotten away with formal night and now they call it evening chic. Speaking of evening chic night, there's usually two of them on a seven day cruise. And on the last of the two, which would be typically on the last sea day, you're going to have a really good menu in the dining room. Let's go take a gander at some of the dining options. You could get a lobster tail meal, or you could get duck la rouge and lobster tail if you want. Regardless, it could be a real celebration, so enjoy the evening whatever way you prefer. For the passengers that are staying in the suites, they get their own restaurant and it's called Luminig. Let's go look at their menu. It's slightly different. I've not eaten in this restaurant before because I've never cruised in a suite. The thing about suites on celebrity cruise ships is you will pay more for your cruise fare but you're going to have a bigger cabin and you're going to have access to some exclusive areas such as this restaurant and maybe you'll have access to other parts of the ship like the retreat. This was a really beautiful space I have to say that as far as I know it's not one of those restaurants that you could pay extra for the day like a specialty restaurant on some of the other cruise lines. Right outside the Lumine is the Shore Excursions Desk. This is where you go if you want to book a tour that's on land when the ship's in port. So you can book your Shore Excursions here in person while you're on the ship. But if there's something that you really want to do, I recommend that you pre-book it before you get on your cruise. You could do that through your online booking or if you're with a travel agent, maybe you can ask them how to do this. Here's another lounge and it was quite busy during the silent disco party. Maybe I'll show you some footage of that later. During the daytime, it's just a beautiful, nice, airy space to hang out. There's some windows. You could get some great views of the water. So this is the kind of view you also get if you have an ocean view cabin. Now, if you have a balcony, you're gonna be higher up, but these are kind of neat windows because you're nice and close to the water. Okay, let's go take a little walk down this next hallway area. There are some passenger cabins here. As we walk down this hallway, the cabins to the right are going to be the ocean view cabins. Those are the ones with the picture windows next to the water. The right, other this side. This is a balcony cabin, 8220. It has a couch, which I'm not sure if this turns into a bed if you have three or four people in the room. You can have a double bed or king size bed, whatever this is, or you can have it split up into two separate twin beds. There's shelving on each side. This is a nice size balcony because there's a place where you can actually sit, stand up, move around. There's a little table there. You have a nice view, but you can see on this ship, this is midship. There's a little jetting out there, so you don't get a straight view of the ship. We did book early and pick this cabin on purpose because it was midship. The reason why you want to book a cabin midship is because generally it has less movement. With that being said, we were sailing in the Mediterranean and it was smooth as glass the whole time. Some of the room amenities include a TV, a laundry bag, hair dryer, drawers, there's some shelving, a safe. They gave us a bottle of champagne. I'm not sure why. Maybe we had some kind of benefit. There were some drinks in the fridge. However, just keep in mind that there is a fee if you do drink those. Every cruise ship that I've been on has the hair dryer out in this little area. We had some nice storage and hangers in our double closet. Fortunately, there were a couple bathrobes in the room. 
We also had a complimentary umbrella to use if it did rain. You do have to return it though. Let's check out the bathroom. This was actually a fair size washroom, probably one of the largest that I've had on a cruise ship. So it was nice and clean, bright, and it had the glass shower doors as opposed to those curtain doors. There was some nice storage in the sides there. Yes, there is shampoo, conditioner, and shower gel in the shower. It is in these canisters as opposed to the bar form. Side of the hallway, those are interior cabins. They'll have no view. The room will be pitch dark when the lights are off. Okay, back to the public area. Let's keep moving. Let's talk about this silhouette dining room. This is where most people will dine and it's two stories high. So when we were sailing on the Celebrity Equinox, this bottom floor, which is on deck three, was for the passengers that had a scheduled dining time. Either they were at the early dining schedule or late dining, and then that would be the time that you eat each and every day. And then typically you're gonna stay at the same table throughout the cruise. You'll probably have the same waiter and assistant waiter, sommelier. Oh, look at this wine rack, by the way. Okay, speaking of sommeliers and wine in the dining room, you can buy a bottle of wine here and then if you don't want to drink it all at one time, they can keep it for you. So they label it and then you can have it, have some more out of the bottle the following. What do you say we go upstairs? This is where I dined when I was on the Celebrity Equinox. So the second floor in the dining room, which is on deck four of the ship, is for the guests that do anytime dining. In a perfect world, anytime dining would work like this. You show up at the dining room anytime between the hours of 5.30 and 9 o'clock and then you get a table for dinner. The reality is you might need a reservation depending on how many people are on your cruise, if it's sailing at full capacity. And the other thing is you're not necessarily going to get the same table every night for dinner. So that's one thing you kind of miss out on. If you do anytime dining, it's you, if you really like a certain waiter or assistant waiter, usually work as a team, you, they, you might have a great set one night and then when you go back the next day, you're sitting somewhere else. With that being said, all the wait staff do a phenomenal job. So you have a few choices. You can just show up and hope you get a table when you want to eat or you can make your reservation ahead of time through the app. Maybe make a phone call to the dining reservation line or just walk down to the dining area and make a reservation in person. Now this little lounge area, this is great if you're waiting for a table, you have a place to hang out. It's also very active in the evening and there could be music playing from down below. Sometimes the bartenders put on a little show. And here is the little ice bar area. So it can get pretty busy in the evening here. This ice bar does not require a fur jacket like at some of the other cruise ships. In the daytime, it tends to be kind of quiet, but it's also just a very nice place to hang out. Maybe read a book, play cards, or just chat with some new friends. If you're liking this video, please subscribe to the channel, Cruise and Jewels. I would appreciate it. Okay. So here we are, the big casino, and there's that ATM and that one's working. And to the left we have the shops. So here you can go in, you can buy things like jewelry, gifts, clothing, sundries. So this is just one set of shops. There's some more in another area that we'll go to. Celebrity cruise ships will have some interesting artwork. Now if you look ahead, they're setting up to do some photography this evening and then to the left they're going to be selling watches and inches of gold. There's the photography set up for the evening. Usually on a cruise ship, on a mass market cruise line anyway, there's going to be photographers out every day catching your cruise. This is the onboard duty free shop. We were sailing the Mediterranean and stayed in the EU the whole time, so the duty-free shop was closed the whole time. I think that's the reason why, I'm not sure. Normally, the duty-free shops are only open when you're in international waters. Now we're at the Future Cruise desk, so this is where you can book your next cruise because you're all excited about the one you're on. This area here, this is where the karaoke goes on. 
and it could be busy or not so busy depends on which itinerary you're doing and what kind of mood the people are in this is just a general uh, open area celebrity central is another area that tends to be popular with the bingo crowd you're gonna see in here that the seating isn't so great depending on what you're doing in there if it's bingo it's a good setup but you're gonna see that there's some posts there so if you're watching a movie or some kind of entertainment try to get there a little bit earlier so you get a good seat okay now the equinox theater this is where you'll go every evening for a show okay moving along the fortune casino try your luck here similar to the duty free shop the casinos on a cruise ship are only going to be open once you're sailing in the international waters if you're in port you can't gamble now this casino had all kinds of table games like craps blackjack poker there's all slot machines of course some casinos have smoking and some don't i don't recall this casino having smoking in there all right now we're into the main lobby area it spans about three levels high we are sandwiched in the middle on deck four craft social is a venue here it's basically like a pub but it's a popular meeting space too uh, especially before dinner the daytime it's not too busy but i have to tell you I've never seen so many people play foosball as I did on this voyage. As we move down the hall, we are going to see that there is a restaurant straight ahead, which is the Silhouette Dining Room. You can enter on either the port or starboard side of the ship. This dining room has won some awards according to the Wine Spectator in 2020 and 2022. Typically where you see stairs, there's going to be elevators. So we just passed the elevators. You can also do the stairs. Some ships, they change the carpeting to let you know where you are in the ship. So the carpeting color may vary. Personally, I like looking at the artwork in the hallways and especially in the stairway wells. Ah, sunshine and the great outdoors. We'll go there later. For now, we're gonna go do a walk through the Ensemble Lounge and on the way, you're going to see this beautiful glasswork in the hallway. This was shot on a sea day and so this was a little busy area because trivia was going on at the time. They had different kinds of trivia throughout the cruise and this particular trivia session was music trivia. Now let's head towards the aft of the ship which is also the back of the ship. Here you're going to see a few different choices for restaurants. A couple of them are specialty restaurants which means that there is a cover charge for them. The first one is the Tuscan Grill. This restaurant serves Italian food, my favorite. I didn't get a chance to eat here personally, but I have heard good things. This is a very beautiful restaurant and you can see it's a great location, especially if you're sitting towards the back because there's these expansive windows with an ocean view. It's the back of the ship, so you'll see where we've been sailing from. Right now, the blinds are drawn, but when it's dinner time, if it's not too sunny out, the blinds will be up. The price to dine here per person is always changing. Expect to pay at least 45 US dollars per person plus gratuities. That's for dinner. Depending on the cruise, you might be able to go for lunch for about $10 less. We're now heading into Blue. Can you guess why they called it Blue? This is a special restaurant for the folks that are sailing in Aqua Class Suites. If you're sailing in one of those suites, this is where you're going to eat instead of the Silhouette Dining Room. It's a lot smaller though. The Silhouette Dining Room, if you recall, was two floors. And look at how beautiful the decor is and the walls. Now the thing about the menu here is it's more of a spa style menu. We considered booking one of these suites so we could eat in this dining room. Also to enjoy some of the spa amenities. However, However, I wasn't too crazy about their menu here. I preferred the Silhouette Dining menu. Now I wanna show you something. Look at these, they're beautiful white roses. They really do put a lot of thought into the design and decor of the cruise ship. There's one more specialty restaurant here and it's Cuisine. This is where they have Le Petit Chef. And so Le Petit Chef is also available on land at some resorts like the Vedanta Resort, which I will also be doing videos on those. But anyway, it's about time we get outside. What do you think? 
So now we're on the outdoor promenade and some of you who've been watching my older videos will know that the outdoor promenade is one of my favorite parts of a cruise ship. The only problem is on this cruise ship there's an obstruction to the view. You can see this is where they keep the lifeboats. So I do want to show you this part of the deck because there are other folks out there like me who do enjoy this outdoor promenade. You can walk outside on both sides of the ship starboard or port side each side has three sets of entrance or exit doors those will be at the forward midship and aft let's go ahead midship outside basically you can walk about i'd say two-thirds of the ship the celebrity equinox outdoor promenade does not wrap around the forward of the ship or the aft of the ship there's limited seating out here, and this area is by the cafe. This is Cafe Bacchio, by the way, not the Ocean View Cafe. Treats here are available throughout the day, but they do change it up, maybe around 11, 11.30 in the morning. So earlier there were things like croissants, and they had my favorite almond croissant, but I forgot to get one. These snacks are complimentary, but if you want to order a coffee or a cappuccino, that is extra. Unless you have a drink package that includes coffees. After dinner, head out into the main lobby area for some live entertainment. As I mentioned in another part of this video, this area spans three levels. So right now we're on deck five and this is Cafe El Bacchio to the left. If you look down to the right on deck three, that's where there's a band playing. Sometimes they'll throw in a DJ set or have a dance party. If you prefer a quieter area but still want to go out, you can head midship or towards the forward of the ship. There's another lounge there and if you blink you might miss it. It's kind of hiding when they have art auctions going on but you can see to the left it's a nice little setup and then you can wander around and look at the art gallery. Speaking of the art gallery, it's open to everyone. You could go browse in the evenings, also during the day. On sea days, there's usually an art auction in this little area, or they may alternate and put it in a larger venue. On this celebrity cruise, I was very happy and excited to learn that my favorite cruise ship artist was on board. I got a chance to meet him. His name is Dwayne, and he also has an art gallery in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. <laughs> Hey Nancy! Hey Nancy! We're going to the art VIP art thing! Enjoy it! His artwork can be found and purchased on a lot of the cruise ships. If you don't feel like shopping for art, maybe you want to go in one of the shops next door to the art gallery. In these shops here you could buy some fancy watches and jewelry. They have a lot of the big name brands. One of the benefits for buying on the cruise ship versus on land is that quite often, depending on your itinerary, the goods that you buy are duty free. I did find on some of the things that I looked at, their prices are competitive to what things are priced on land. And I don't know if you just noticed there, but we are going by the photo gallery and you can buy things there like a GoPro camera or SD cards for your cameras. Inside this shop here, you're going to see that they actually have high-end Chanel bags or Louis Vuitton. Some of them are vintage, some of them are brand new. Another great brand and selection of items you can find on cruise ships are Maui Gym sunglasses. Those are the best in my opinion. You're probably gonna see other major brands like Ray-Ban. Again, remember these are high ticket items, so if you had something in mind that you really saw and you wanted, I would probably grab it on a cruise ship just because of that duty free option. Another thing you can think of is if you are shopping for a vintage handbag, at least on the cruise ship you can see and touch them, as opposed to if you're shopping online it might be harder to figure out the quality of this vintage bag. Anyway, I've seen that they are offering these vintage bags on a lot of the cruises that I've taken recently. It's not exclusive to the celebrity brand. Every cruise ship that I've been on has a duty-free shop and this one is no different than the others. This is where you come to purchase your makeup if you forgot yours at home or buy some new perfume. If you don't want to spend money, no problem. Get a late night show at the Equinox Theater or go outside for a stroll on the promenade. Look at the beautiful moon tonight and how it lights up the water. There's nothing like a warm balmy night with a gentle sea breeze. What do you say it's time to grab a lounge chair and watch the water go by? You can find these lounge chairs towards the forward of the ship. 
I just want to point out that there's not a lot of lounge chairs on this outdoor promenade so this is just one area. The other area is more midship towards where the cafe Bacchio is. I think this is the starboard side and so on the port side of this ship that's the smoking area and there were chairs there. Did you know that most of the people that watch the Cruise and Jewels channel do not actually subscribe to the channel? If you've been watching this video and you're still tuned in, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe. It will actually help benefit the channel and then I can make more videos. Say you're not in the mood for a party but you want to go outside. Head up to deck 15 and go for a stroll. You'll get a view of the moonlight if it's out or maybe some stars. You'll get some fresh air and it's going to be nice and warm if it's the summertime in the Mediterranean or if you're in the Caribbean, for the further south you go, the warmer it's going to be in the evenings. This area here to the right, this is the smoking area. So it's the opposite side of the mass grill we saw earlier. The mass grill on the opposite side of the ship serves things like hamburgers and french fries but that closes around six o'clock in the evening and i'm assuming the bar on this side also closes around the same time it's kind of peaceful getting a view of the pool late at night time to keep moving let's go check out an area we didn't see earlier and that's the retreat area that's on deck 16 you walk up it's towards the forward of the ship and that area is for people that are staying in the suites it is an exclusive area, so you do have to pay extra for use of that area. It's more busy in the daytime. I didn't see anybody out there at night. If you come out of the retreat area and you head more forward, you will get close to the very front of the ship on deck 16 outside. You could get some great views of the expansive ocean here. There's no windows, so it's unobstructed. There are some lounge chairs, which is nice. However, just to forewarn you, there is a sports court here and so there might be people playing basketball or doing activities, so you might hear the thumping of a basketball. Have you ever played a sport or basketball on a cruise ship before? I did. The last time I played, actually the last time I played basketball was on the Celebrity Equinox, however it was at the aft of the ship. Does anybody ever remember the court being on the aft? Am I remembering this correctly? Most of the time you're going to see sports courts on cruise ships towards the aft of the ship on the upper decks. One thing to point out is that if you do want to do some kind of sport activity on a cruise ship, the higher up you are, the faster you're sailing, the windier it could get, so sometimes the wind might affect the way the game is played. I'm going to take you on a tour of the pool deck in the evening now and the reason for this is just because there's really hardly anybody out here right now. There was a clip earlier in the video where we were walking one deck above. Anyway, this is what it looks like in the evening. You could see that there's lots of lounge chairs but just be warned that on a hot summer day this place is going to be packed. Now the difference between these chairs and the chairs you're going to find at a resort is I find at resorts people tend to park their towels there all day and then that's it, that's their chair for the day. I don't find it's quite as bad on a cruise ship as it is at all inclusive resorts. People do come and go but it is going to be really busy. If you want to get a group of about four chairs together that's probably going to be difficult but to get one or two chairs that's usually not a problem. It's a little hard to tell now because it's nighttime, but in the daytime it's really sunny out here and I don't find there's much shade. I tend to hang out in the other pool area which is the solarium. I like this area here too because it's shaded and it's still really warm. You can hear all the music and the activity of the main pools but it's a little more relaxing. If you look to the top left hand area, that area is the towel kiosk, so there are fresh towels there or you could put your used towels there. Here's the other area I like, the solarium pool. Oh, have you noticed the public spaces that have doors have sliding doors? That's really nice if you need to have some of your hands free. So the reason nobody's here is because it's the evening and the pool is closed, although you can still come and sit in the area if you want. It's nice and warm in here and sheltered from the wind. There are hot tubs and another pool. The water does get changed throughout the cruise, so one day the water might be a little cool, the next day it might be super warm. You don't know what you're gonna get until you hop in the pool. 
Anyway, these chairs are cushioned and it is quite relaxing and it's not hard to fall asleep here. This is supposed to be an adults only area. Now, whether or not that's enforced, that's another thing. I'll also point out that this is a quiet zone, so you're not gonna be getting the sounds of a rock and roll band. As we head out, if you look towards the left, that area there has food in the daytime, in the mornings, and then usually lunch until two o'clock. There are tables and chairs there, and then there's also a place where you could get basic drinks like water and coffee. This side, this will take us towards a spa area. Now we'll go to deck 10. This is primarily a passenger deck area. If you've never seen a passenger deck, this is what it looks like. There are long hallways. They usually run from the forward to the aft of the ship. And then it will be looking exactly like this on the other side. Sometimes the cruise ships will change the carpeting. Maybe you've seen one of my other videos where I talk about the secret messages and the carpeting on cruise ships. If you haven't, you might want to check that out. It's just a short little video and it's set to the music of Johnny Cash. It is quite unbelievable how long these hallways go. So if it is cold out or it's raining, whatever, you don't necessarily have to walk outside on public deck. I'll give you an example. If you're on deck 14 and you're at the forward and you want to get to the buffet, which is in the aft, at some part of that trip, if you stay on the same deck, you're going to have to be outside. But if you just go walk down a couple decks, you could scoot through one of these passenger hallways and then you avoid the elements. Okay, here's the interesting thing about this cruise ship. This one has two major sets of elevators. One is closer to the forward of the ship and then the other one is closer to the midship aft. So some cruise ships have three sets. One might be in the forward, one in the middle, one in the aft. This one has two. Notice the sliding doors here. I think it's because it keeps out some of the noise, but I really don't know. This area is the library, so you're welcome to come here. It's an inviting and relaxing space, and also it's probably a good meeting spot if you're meeting somebody that actually lives on this floor for the week. You might notice that the bookcases span two floors. However, I don't think you can access the books on deck 11. If you head down to deck 9, you're going to see something similar. There's another little meeting area close to the elevators. However, this time it's a little room where you can play cards or table games. Two more decks down is deck 7 and that is where they have a conserve lounge. There is seating here again close to the elevator doors. If there is music playing in the lobby area, you will hear it here. Next up is the eye lounge or the internet lounge. You might want to come here if you need to use a computer, maybe check into one of your flights going home or sign up to get Wi-Fi on the ship. There also appears to be Apple products for sale and then they probably sell some supplies for your computer too like SD cards or charging cords and don't forget the celebrity branded items. This has been fun showing you around the Celebrity Equinox. Please subscribe to the channel Cruise and Jewels and hit the like. See you in the next video.